Good morning all, thank you for joining this morning. Uh, my name is Nick Lovell from Byte Software Services. Um, I'm going to be joined by Joe Hearth this morning from AppSense. Um, and the, the aim of today is to run through uh, and to, to demonstrate to you some of the, the features of Application Manager, AppSense Application Manager, which uh, in my opinion is, is, is one of the most underrated uh, products within the AppSense, AppSense portfolio. Um, we've got uh, um, a number of bits and pieces which we're, which we're going to run through with you today. So, Without much further ado, we just run through a little bit of housekeeping with you. So, first off, um, all attendees are in uh, are on mute at the moment. Uh, if you do have any questions over the course of the webinar, please do submit them in the question box. Um, we'll, we'll run a quick Q and A at the end just to run through some of those questions um, and, and answer those. Um, following the webinar, we will be sending out a recording, which will be sent out to to all of the attendees. Um, and there similarly will be a, a quick critique form to, to run through some of the, um, sorry, to, to ask you to provide some feedback as to, as to how the webinar has gone. Um, so without much further ado, I'll, I'll pass over to Joe. Uh, hopefully Joe's there. Um, and like I say, if you do have any questions at all, please do, do submit them and we'll come back to you at the end. Yeah, I am here. Cheers, Nick. Um, cool. Do you want to transfer the screen? Okay, right. Um, are we good? Can we see my screen? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, morning, everyone. Um, my name is Joe Hearth, and I'm one of the pre-sales consultants at Absence. Today, I'll be hosting the webinar covering application control and how to reduce your software licensing costs using Application Manager. Right, so just quickly a brief overview on what we plan to cover. So, today we'll start to look at some of the common challenges associated with managing software licenses. We're going to look at these simple scenarios and specifically for user environments with uh, RDS and Xenap and how introducing application control solution can help and what benefits it can bring. I'll also touch upon how this could affect if you're looking to migrate to the latest operating system of Windows 10. And at the end of the session, I'll open up the line to the questions and I'll attempt to answer them as honestly as I can. Cool, right, so let's start by taking a quick look at some of the common challenges faced by organizations in terms of software licensing. The reality is that most organizations struggle to maintain control over their software licenses. Can we all honestly say that we have a handle on what software is running in our systems and how much we pay for it? Do we even know if the software has been purchased for our users and if they're actually using it? If users are making use of unlicensed software, we're leaving the organization open to fines from software vendors and uh, different compliances. The alternative is to overcompensate on licensing and buy more than we need um, and be on the safe side, but that's wasting a lot of money. This confusion is intensified by the multitude of different terms and conditions imposed by different software vendors. So in addition to a lack of visibility combined with loose security controls can result in an influx of user-introduced apps, which can leave your organization at risk of further fines and also a prospect of unmanaged, unpatched, and hence insecure applications being pres present within your desktop and on your server estate. Overcompensating and buying too many licenses that aren't in use can have an adverse effect on future budgets imposed by your organization. And being non-compliant when a system and software audit is taken can also result in budget constraints for the future to offset any fines that might need to be paid. So let's take a look at an example of uh, software licensing and how it can hit a company hard in terms of overspend. Let's assume the organization is making a multi-user environment based on a combination of Microsoft RDS and Citrix Xenapp. Historically, in this kind of environment, Microsoft have enforced a per-device licensing model for applications such as Visio or Project. What that means is the license must be purchased for each device potentially capable of accessing the remote desktop server and running their app. As Zenop can provide access to Windows apps from many different types of devices, including PCs, laptops, Macs, smartphones, etc., 
when Citrix is introduced into the equation, that list of devices can potentially that can access those applications is now dramatically increased, and hence your licensing costs can potentially spiral. So, a quick example. A company wants to make Visio available to its users via their Citrix app servers. This company has a thousand users who are all capable of connecting to the Citrix app servers via their local PCs. So in Microsoft terms, theoretically, that means there's a thousand potential devices that can access Visio. Of those a thousand users, only a hundred actually require access to Visio. So let's assume a Visio license per device currently retails at approximately £350. In Microsoft's eyes, that's the potential for one user from each of those 1,000 devices to connect and run that app. So 1,000 users' license costs are, are required. That would be £350 times 1,000. That means £350,000. However, as only 100 users actually need to use Visio, the license spend should actually be £350 times 100, more like 35000 which is 10% of the actual cost. So you can start to see where software vendors are making their money and how organizations are kind of being forced to pay for the licenses they don't really require. So what is application control? How do we address this? Well, we can use something called application control. It's the ability to contextually manage which users and devices have access to specific applications in your environment. It can be used to deny or allow an application from being executed or installed when the executable is attempted to be run. AppSense Application Management offers granular policy control that can identify when an application is entitled to be run or installed based on factors such as computer or connecting device name, IP address or address range. This obviously goes further than your traditional built-in tools shipped with Windows OS and makes control of applications a lot more flexible. Application control can make use of traditional whitelist and blacklist models where an allowed application needs to be added to a whitelist and those you want to prevent are added to a blacklist. However, if not configured correctly, this model can often be bypassed by simply renaming an unauthorized application to one that exists on the whitelist. By making use of signature hashes, hashes such as SHA-1 or SHA-256, which effectively take a digital fingerprint of each file, then the whitelist slash blacklist model can become very secure. However, implementing application control this way can introduce ongoing maintenance and increase admin overhead, as whitelist and blacklist need to be constantly updated when third-party software needs upgrading. Your blacklist also needs to be constantly maintained due to the ongoing threat posed by executable viruses, malware, and other day zero exploits. A more scalable and less intensive approach is to make use of a trusted ownership model. How this works is, when a user introduces something into your environment, they take ownership of that executable. So if they download it, copy it, or move it into the environment, the user owns that file. Now, if the user is a trusted owner, which by default typically includes the admin, trusted installer, and system account, then the executable will be allowed to execute or be installed for anyone who attempts to use it. If, however, the executable is owned by a non-trusted owner, then the executable instantly gets blocked. The beauty of this is that IT don't even need to know what the executables are that the users are attempting to introduce. So there is no ongoing maintenance of whitelist or blacklists, and it prevents 100% of unauthorized executables from being run by your users. Things like unlicensed software, password crackers, CPU intensive apps, or even malware. Now, I'm going to demonstrate to you at the end of this um, how all of that works because I appreciate it's quite a lot to take in. So, here are the three best practice recommendations for reducing your software licensing costs. Number one, to offer the most secure protection for your users, use a trusted ownership model or combine it with a whitelist based on your digital signature hashes to allow user access to your approved applications. This will ensure that all unauthorized apps are blocked and only those applications installed by a trusted owner or that match a specific fingerprint will be allowed to execute. If a user attempts to replace these apps with another executable, it will either fail the trusted ownership check or the digital hashes.
As a minimum, always audit the installation of any user-introduced applications or force your users to acknowledge why they are doing it. For example, a user may try and install an unauthorized application in your environment by renaming it first. Therefore, they're consciously attempting to bypass your existing control. By auditing these installations and forcing acknowledgement, you can ensure that any user introduced application is identified and checked. However, preventing the install in the first place is the most secure and cost-effective method for avoiding unlicensed software or malicious executables from being introduced into the environment. Use application control techniques to satisfy your license requirements using context-aware conditions to target specific cases. So let's take a look at some of the extended benefits of application control. Antivirus software is only as good as the, the last day the software definitions are updated. So antivirus vendors need to know about the new viruses before they can produce a patch for it. And that introduces Windows vulnerability. Every IT administrator nightmare is completely unknown zero day threat, and that they're appearing more and more rapidly. Signature response times from technology vendors can never be short enough, and we can only offer reactive protection. This window of vulnerability is where an organization is at risk from attack until the reactive solution is updated. Viruses such as CryptoLocker, CryptoWall, or other ransomware bypassed a large number of AV vendors before the solutions were suitably uh, patched. Luckily, AppSense is able to prevent these types of viruses from propagating out of the box and did so successfully at a number of our customers, preventing the ransomware executable from running and delivering its payload. So AppSense's trusted ownership model offers an additional layer to your existing perimeter security and is a powerful tool in any layered security approach. And by application control and auditing, within your IT estate, it can protect the innocent user from unintentional error, such as opening a mail attachment that might contain a virus. So what does the future look like? Microsoft Windows 10 has been one of the most anticipated operating systems, yet with the Microsoft claiming to be the most secure version of Windows ever. Recent reports claim that there are now over 200 million endpoints running Windows 10. As such, many enterprise organizations are now looking at how and when they're going to make that migration over to Windows 10. However, even with the latest operating system, users with standard privileges are still able to execute and install unauthorized applications, including unlicensed software, password crackers, malware, or CPU-intensive applications, irrespective of the new features. The introduction of the Windows Store apps adds another level of complexity in terms of managing a diverse, ever-growing list of applications. AppSense has the ability to control Windows desktop apps, i.e. the traditional apps that are locally installed, as well as the new Windows Store apps to ensure license compliance, prevent malware, and ensure the strongest level of security at the desktop layer. I'm now just going to take you through um, some of these things which I've spoken to you about and actually give you a bit of a demo um, so you can kind of understand actually what is going on. So, so we, we've currently got a new newish product called um, Insight. Now the good thing is with Insight is we can start by tying down our applications and controlling by actually doing a bit of analysis of the environment and, and having a look to see out there where we start, where do we start uh, creating those boundaries. So you might have Visio installed on a number of devices, but really you have no control over where they are, who's got them, who, who's running them, and when they're running them. So we can start off by using our Insight tool to actually create a bit of a report on, for example, Visio. So we know it's the device-based license. So let's search for Visio. And there it is. So we can now start to filter by computer. Computer.
And if you hover over it, you can see here that your computer account is three. So you know that you need three Visio licenses for that. So let's just take a quick look at what this actually looks like for the user. So just to quickly show you, I've got a Windows 7, a Windows 8.1, and a Windows 10. Okay, I'm logged on with the demo user on all of these desktops, just so you can see it's the same person. Let's demo again. Visio on Windows 7. In this scenario, I've only allowed my Windows 10 endpoint to have a license. So Visio should be blocked on Windows 7, on Windows 8.1, but it should be allowed to run on Windows 10. Essentially, when the user now tries to launch Visio, they're going to get this unauthorized message. This can be customizable. But essentially, we've blocked that application from running. Again, blocking it on 8.1. But when we go to Windows 10, now this device has a license for Visio. Same user, but Visio runs absolutely fine. So that's the, the license compliance piece where we can block the software based on a device license. Now, I just want to quickly take you over the trusted ownership model because it's, I appreciate it's quite difficult to, um, to kind of grasp. So, for example, let's take a look at Notepad. Now, when I say trusted ownership, this is just NTFS permissions built into the Windows. So if we look at the security tab, we go to the advanced, we go to the owner, we can see that the owner is a trusted installer. So this is the whitelist of, of users which are allowed to, uh, of owners, sorry, which are allowed to, to run applications. So as long as the trusted installer system or an administrator is in this list, that application will run. So let's just run it. Absolutely fine from my demo user. However, if I copy that, and I paste it onto my desktop, let's just take a quick look at what happens to the security. The owner is now the demo user. Now that is because the, the demo user has initiated that, um, that copy and paste, which therefore means he's taken ownership. Now, due to our model, that now means that if we double click that, it's blocked. So the same executable, it's the same software, but we're now blocking it because the ownership has changed. So when you receive a malware or a virus or something like that through uh, an email, you actually become the owner because that's dropped it into your profile. So when you try and run it, it doesn't run, which is why we're able to block sort of day zero vulnerabilities. Just go back to our presentation. So at this stage, I'd just like to open it up to any questions that anyone has. Um, there's my email at the bottom there. Do feel free to contact me if you don't want to put your question out for everyone to see. You can contact me privately. Um, but yeah, ultimately that's that's that. Delay there, guys. So just very quickly, wanted to run through a couple of bits to to wrap up what Joe's just talked about. So so you know you know why would you want to engage with Bytes uh, around absence? Well, first and foremost, uh, we're partner of the year 2015. Um, based on uh, a number of criteria, revenues, um, as, as well as competency and um, the way we've delivered into the market over the last 12 months. Um, like I say, we've been we've been named partner of the year. So, you know, the the relationships that we hold with the guys over at AppSense, the competencies that we've got, um, and like I say, the ways we've delivered this in the past are all are all key to that to that award. Um, Part and parcel to that, uh, and obviously integral to that, is the is is, is the Bytes virtualization team. So uh, on the right there, you've got myself and Jess Hendy in the middle. Um, we are the, the the key leads within the virtualization team, um, primarily looking at things like um, Citrix, VMware, AppSense, Atlantis, Lakeside, um, essentially the whole VDI piece, uh, and and then supported by uh, a gent by the name of Simon Dobbs, who's our 
who's our go-to guy uh, around anything technical um, and is able to to not only talk about but able to demonstrate the the links um, and the and and the benefits of uh, the various products within the within the virtualization team. So, um, part and parcel of, of 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 Simon's of Simon's role is to deliver both desktop and data center assessments um, and, and health checks. So, um, remotely deploying an agent onto your environment uh, over a period of time, we pull out a raft of of information and data, uh, which we would then look to present back to you. Uh, at, a, at a later date um, and in doing so demonstrate back to you um, a number of uh, cost savings and uh, areas whereby uh, we can make recommendations uh, to your current estate and, and then finally I want to mention to you all the the business solution center um, looking at the list of attendees I know that there's at least one or two of you on there that have already already attended um, it's uh, it's a resource of ours whereby everything that we do, everything that we sell, is is in one large demo suite. So um, everything Citrix, everything VMware, everything AppSense, everything Atlantis, Lakeside, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is all is all detailed and, and, and is all listed in there. Uh, and we're able to take you in, sort of build your build a, a replica, as it were, of your of your environment, uh, and again demonstrate to you where. Um, some of the ecosystem and complementary technologies are able to incre increase um, user performance, uh, sorry, increase performance, increase um, user um, and user ability, and uh, as well as demonstrate back to you cost savings. So thanks again for you all joining today. Um, if there are any questions at all, please do now ask them. I'm happy to go through a quick Q&A. So not having a great, uh, not having many, uh, having many questions come through at the moment. Um, if anyone has anything that they would like to raise or would like to, to ask, um, ask, please do check your questions over to tell me more at bytes.co.uk. I'll be monitoring that over the course of today and can come back to you if there are any, any further questions or queries at all. So that's it for now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, and like I say, if there are any questions, I'll come back to you shortly. Thanks again. Thank you, guys.